Hey everybody, Brooks Ritter here, um, here back at you with another YouTube video. I'm excited about this one because I'm going to be talking about Fuel for the Fire. And uh, some of you guys know that it is the opening track off of Ghosts Come to Life, my newest EP. And um, it's a banger. It's definitely a banger. Um, yeah, just... Uh, it rocks, <laughs> to say the least. But uh, yeah, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the writing process of that and just kind of how it evolved um, from me and the acoustic guitar when I wrote it. So funny enough, I before I, you know, shot this, I looked at my phone to see, you know, kind of, I log everything. So in my voice memos, um, it said, Fuel for the Fire, in parentheses, newer, October 17th or October 30th um, of 2017. And um, so what that tells me is, you know how Apple does all the, I'm giving myself away, I'm an Apple user. But, uh, you know, with all the updates and whatnot, so sometimes in changing of phones, you have, you know, older versions so I know that because that's newer, um, I wrote that, I guess, sometime in late 2016 or very early 2017. And, um, you know, for, I'll just kind of grab the guitar for a moment. I'm not going to do full version or anything like that, but this is kind of <clears throat> where the song started. So... That's what you said, fuel for the fire We're burning red, wait for the wind to blow And the fire spreads So that's kind of the idea and for most of you, if you listen to that, you do get the sibilance of the and that's the main riff of what you hear on the EP. So um, obviously I didn't hear that when I first wrote Fuel for the Fire, but it had elements of it already in it. So it was this quiet, whispery kind of thing. Um, I've got my notebook uh, just to kind of looking at the lyric sheet currently and just kind of this song evolved in, in stages, right? So for any of you songwriters out there who uh, get discouraged when you write a verse and then nothing nothing comes nothing of inspiration comes after that hang on because i am a product of that as well um i've actually just learned to embrace it um and with all of you know you put a lot of pressure on yourself to want to finish a song in one sit and i tell you it it just sometimes it happens um and sometimes it doesn't. So um, embrace it. Come back to it. Um, that's what this song was, literally. So sometime in 2016 or early 2017, I started the song. Um, and for me, a lot of it, it is, I just kind of ramble for a while. And that first line, the one that really... <clears throat> was a tone setter and I say tone setter because I literally will just kind of like how rappers freestyle I'm kind of freestyle I'll just kind of do that for a while until something sticks out and the idea fuel for the fire just came out so I wasn't thinking about it um I didn't have alter ulterior motives necessarily like you know fuel for the fire what does that mean 
it's like when someone keeps stacking them, you know, you're just, um, the idea that someone just keeps at you, right? And you're, they're just adding fuel to the fire. So, um, that idea was like, okay, that's very visual. Um, there's a lot packed into that. <clears throat> and I just kind of went with it, right? Um, so I wrote that first verse and it, um, we're burning red, fuel for the fire. That's what you said, fuel for the fire, we're burning red, wait for the wind to blow and the fire spreads. And, you know, just, you know, I'm not, I'm not thinking about, um, about this, but um, in those times, specifically when I wrote this too, California, there was a lot of fires. And so just thinking about the idea of wind, um, just spreading the fire, um, and how it kind of consumes everything it touches. Um, and then the idea, the second verse came to me, heed my anger, that's what she said. So there's this angry person. <laughs> heed my anger, her eyes were red, waiting for her prey to fall in her eyes of death. So obviously, whoever this guy was writing about, <laughs> <laughs> just kidding but <clears throat> clearly um and that was literally all I could write I had no chorus so I had the first two verses those I don't know when they came together if I I think I just had that fuel for the fire verse the very first one I think I had that one for a while and then finally that came heed my anger and then nothing I went on a dry spell <laughs> with this song and I would come back to it and you know, nothing happened, <laughs> nothing magical happened. But uh, a friend of mine reached out to me and asked if I would like to come visit him and in LA. Um, I mentioned LA, um, but that actually happened um, in November of 2017. So I go visit my friend and, you know, we had talked about like, he just kind of wanted to show me kind of the, the LA way of doing things and just the music industry, meet some people. And I did, I met some really, really cool people. Um, and one of which uh, he was playing drums for uh, JP Sachs. Um, who maybe some of you guys know um, his music. He is a pop uh, R&B singer um, based out of LA, phenomenal singer songwriter. And he and Julia Michaels um, collaborated and wrote um, If the World Was Ending. And that happened uh, a year after I hung out with him or a year and a half, maybe two years even. Um, it's all blurring together when, when with that song because it, it came out I think two years ago, but it was a year after we had hung, and um, so I get into a writing session with JP uh, because of my friend, and um, we're all sitting in there, and this is kind of one of those humbling moments too because I you know it was a writing session, and I've done writing sessions, I've but I had no expectation of what I was supposed to do in this case. Um, we were going to uh, JP's producer's house um, where his studio is, and we were just gonna go back there. And they kind of started off with, well, show me what you're working with and what you're working on. And at the time, um, I was working on um, kind of some songs that um, didn't make it onto Stereo of Steel. <clears throat> that um, my band at the time, they were fresh to me. So like we were doing a lot of writing and um, recording them. Um, and so I was just like, wow, man, I've got to show them these mixes that I have. And that's kind of what I'm working on right now. And, you know, we listened to a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And 
the the mood in the room was just kind of like I, I didn't I could see like wheels were turning but like not really understanding and like it was it just it were, there was a vibe there was a weird vibe and I was like looking at my friend and he's like ah, I don't know <laughs> and um and then um it almost seemed like, okay, we're gonna shut this down. And um, and then I was like, well, let me pull out this song real quick. And it, it was Fuel for the Fire. And I played the bones of it. And uh, at that moment, I got a, you know, got my one of many um, slices of humble pie. And um, JP just kind of, he's like, all right, we're all friends here. And, um, I just want to say what you want to do in these sort of things is that you pull out that you don't pull out, you know, recordings of what you're working on. Cause like, what are we going to do with that? Um, and I was just like, duly noted my friend. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so we just started working on this song and the producer, um, his name's Ryan. He just kind of made a loop. Um, with the vibe of Fuel for the Fire, with that kind of, like I mentioned, what, what it was at the time. And I had no chorus, and then JP just started singing. And, um, and he said, I've got, I got nowhere left to run. Nowhere left to run. I got nowhere left to run. Nowhere left to run. So... Um, if you're following along, obviously those aren't the lyrics that I sing on Fuel for the Fire for the chorus. But at this time, um, you know, uh, JP helped me write Fuel for the Fire. And then all of a sudden, so we got that, we've got the chorus, and then the third verse just kind of spewed out of me, right? Um, she's my demon. That's what I say. She's my demon. In my bed she lays, waiting for the night to fall till the break of day. Um, and there's a lots of there's lots of imagery there, uh, demons haunting, <laughs> you know, there's a sort of imagery there. But um, and then that was a wrap. Um, I thought the song was finished. We kind of did a little quick demo of it with this really cool um, syncopated sort of loop in the background and just my acoustic and voice. And, you know, we did the octave jump thing. I was like, oh man, this is, this is it. This is it. This is going to be awesome. And came back to Louisville. Um, and, you know, this is 2017. <laughs> so, um, life happened. Um, and speed up to when I am preparing to, Vince and I have already had our conversation, I'm demoing, but just better versions um, of voice memos, just of the conciseness of each song. Um, and I'm doing Fuel for the Fire, and I get to the chorus, um, and not even thinking about it. So this has also been two years since I've done the session with JP. Um, finishing the song and just without even hesitating I sing um, I've got nothing left to lose now and I just keep repeating that and my eyes are closed and it's like nothing everything's just kind of spewing out of me <laughs> so to speak um, and then I realized after I finished that demo, um, and no, the bridge hasn't been wrote, written yet, so we're still getting there. Um, but I didn't even notice that I had changed the words until I'd finished. And so, like on my on, on my notebook page, was the second page of my notebook. Um, <clears throat> I still have, I got nowhere left to run. I never changed it specifically until 
you know, I decided, no, that's it. You know, given life circumstances, going through a divorce and um, just all of, you know, uh, this isn't, this isn't about that, but it just kind of felt right and it felt better. I've got nothing left to lose. Um, and so I went with it and, um, you know, I just, one of those things of like in my gut, I was like, you know, I think that's the course I've got nothing left to lose. And, um, honestly, what's really weird is I can, I sang that better. Um, it didn't, I felt like, I, I don't know the words sometimes, they get caught up in your throat weird when you're singing, especially when you do an octave jump. And so it, it was one of those things where I sing that line better too. So it just kind of all felt nat more natural. So I went with it. Fast forward. <laughs> and I promise we're getting close. We're getting close, people. Um, we are rehearsing. You know, we're like I mentioned in the last video, the... Uh, pre-production. So during that pre-production, I am uh, with the band and we're all together. And that's when the riff, I had my Telecaster, it felt great. <laughs> Seth goes into a crazy blazing solo. Uh, and we're like, okay, we're starting this song off huge. It's not going to be the boom, boom, the boom, 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 boom. So we're not going to do that. Um, you like my little mouth noises? Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we were like, this is going to be a huge, huge intro. And then we're going to bring it down. And um, we got to the end and it was just like something was, I had, I had a line in my head that I felt like I had to get out. And one of us suggested, dude, I think we need a bridge. It might've been Vince. It might've been might have been Nico. It might have been Steve. Hell, it might have been Seth. Um, but anyway, we all just kind of went with that idea. I immediately play in E minor. So we're in B B minor is the key. So I go into, that's a big strum. Uh, bring. Um, I go into an E minor and the lines just came to me. Um, won't you tell me something? Is my love worth nothing? Um, and then we immediately just write the bridge. I'm like, ah, I don't think I need to say anything more than that. Um, and sometimes the songwriters, you know, like if you're in a, a jam, like you're like, we've got a timeline and we've got to finish this. Um, sometimes it feels like cheating when you're just repeating a line this didn't feel like that to me at all. And we changed the chords on the second part though, to make it feel a little more fresh. Um, and it was a perfect, um, in my opinion, way to end Fuel for the Fire. And so that my friends is the overview, kind of the landscape shot uh, of Fuel for the Fire. Um, yeah, started in 2016, 17, ended in 2019. Went from Louisville to LA, back to Louisville, to actually Jeffersonville, Indiana, where we were rehearsing. And uh, yeah, man, so songwriters, don't lose heart, keep going. And um, yeah, uh, appreciate a like. If you watch this, if you enjoy, please subscribe at the top. Hit the bell if you want to get the notifications of when I do these. So, um, yeah, I'm pretty much, I'm going to go down the line um, just in order of each song. And um, until we get to the last one. So, that's five. And then I'll do some acoustic versions, too, on here just for fun. Some of my old songs, too. Some covers, as you all are vibing with me. Um, really appreciate it. Um, please, if this is your first time watching me, uh, please go listen to Ghosts Come to Life, Brooks Ritter, on Apple Music, iTunes, Spotify, anywhere you get your um, streaming from. So I'm on there. And uh, yeah, share away. Share it with people you think would like it. So appreciate you and uh, much love.